happy Easter, everybody. I hope you are having a wonderful holiday, whichever holiday you you celebrate. I mostly do the 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 uh, springtime kind of thing, but I was I was brought up uh, in a Catholic household, so uh, my family's doing Easter. So anyway, hello, happy happy holiday, everybody, and all right. Um, Hello. If you are new here, you're probably wondering what the heck. Hi. I'm here 365 days of the year. I take your political questions out of the chat. So just leave your questions in the chat before I come on. 10% of my income from everything black and orange goes to Feeding America at feedingamerica.org, which supplies food to food banks across the country. That is an ongoing thing. We have epic troll slayers. We have got a fantastic community because of you. You are so so kind to each other. You are uh, so kind to me. Um, thank you. And um, if you're watching this on replay, hello. you go down the description box. I don't have all the questions for today, but uh, so I'm a it's going to be a little bit playing it by ear. Anyway, but uh, no, I, I did not do that on purpose. I just, anyway, um, just dawned on me that, oh, um, but uh, everything will be time stamped, so you can uh, jump ahead, or you can watch the whole thing back on one point two five speed. So, oh, I'm glad you. I'm glad I was able to make you happy today, and because that's what I want to do. And uh, my Easter basket, which is uh, I have got, I have got chocolate uh, almonds, and this I need this because making his return uh, return uh, appearance this year, Jake. <laughs> I'm vegan um, and uh, I like being vegan, but I have no choice in the matter. I, I, I can't eat anything higher on the food chain. Um, so Jake, the milkless Easter bunny. So uh, I'll be cracking into this, but I, I really should have some protein first anyway. All right. All right. Okay. Put that there. Put that there. And yes, Kristen. Yes. Uh, Clarence Thomas's billionaire benefactor, Harlan Crow. Yes, is a reportedly a big collector of Nazi memorabilia. He has a copy of Mein Kampf that's signed. Yes, indeed. I wish I was kidding. I'm not kidding. No. Um, Hitler's nephews. Um, let, let, let me let me put this in perspective. So hang on. Um, at three, let's say three fifteen. Okay. Hang on. Harlan Crow. Um, Harlan Crow is, you guys were talking about it earlier. Uh, I saw Kevin and who, who else was here? Um, hello, hello. Do, 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 do. And okay. So it was a ways back, but, um, basically the you were to, okay so you guys are talking about harlan harlan crow in texas and how he's he's a um he's a developer from way back i guess is what what you're saying hello becca becca from house of lenormand is here hello hello isaiah says wow this is way worse than i imagined i thought it was cute <laughs> and i have sparkles on Sparkles. So, yeah. Anyway, um. So anyway, he's pretty horrible, but he does have he has a, a he has a bunch of statues in his garden of like Stalin and Mao, I think, and um, he has memorabilia from uh, 
Hitler. Now, the, the thing you have to understand, um, GM Davis is Hitler's nephew, and I thought I had it rough. He actually had, I, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is he has, he had two nephews. And what, me, meanwhile, in, um, you know, here on, in reality, what Hitler did was so heinous that Adolf Hitler's nephews swore never to have children so that his his bloodline would die out. And technically they were they were um, they were to receive all, um, all of the royalties from Mein Kampf and they they said no and all of the royalty for every every copy of Mein Kampf you buy today, the royalties that would go to the author or author's family are going to uh, charity. So they really, his own nephews were just like, I mean, imagine taking your, you know, imagine in your own life, your uncle being so heinous that you are like, okay, I'm not having children. I will make sure his bloodline dies with me. And all the money he made from his work, I will never see a dime of it. That's all right. Those were those were Hitler's nephews, blood relatives. Now this jerk in Texas, Harlan Crow, he thinks this is just fabulous. He collects all kinds of things from authoritarians. He has a signed copy of Mein Kampf. Signed. No. Look, I'm a big, I was an art history major. Granted, I didn't finish. I had my health collapsed in my last year. So I came close, but I, 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 I studied a lot of art history. Um, and uh, I love history. And if every time, anytime I've ever been, uh, been around anything historical, I take very, very good care of it. I have these rules and guidelines that I live by. And one of them is that uh, one of them is to steward history that I like, like up, like up on my shelves, I've got like bound, like good housekeeping uh, magazines from eight, the 1880s. I've got some bound copies of Good Housekeeping from around 1910, and I keep very good care of them. They're very safe. You put anything around me, I will take care of it. But there are exceptions. And that is that that copy, a signed copy of Mein Kampf. Do you know how in general against book burning I am? But I think that would be the exception. That's not cute. It's not, oh, never forget. No, we can, we can still have the book around and have the money going to charity, but that piece of evil, no. And that's not the only thing. That is not the only thing. Yes, was it, was it, who was it here? Thread of Hope saying evil fanboy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Darren says, I don't get all these Republicans who worship Hitler. Yeah. They have no idea how many uh, Hitler would have thrown, Hitler would have thrown many of them into, into camps, starting with Clarence Thomas, Greg Abbott. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I've got an itch right on the edge of my, right, right there, right on the tip of my nose. Right there, sorry. Um, yeah. It, it, was that Lady Eva? This man is an absolute scumbag. Uh, okay, I missed it, but um, I, I'm I'm agreeing with you. So anyway, Harlan Crow. Let's start with this jerk. Yeah, and and the only reason I'm saying that thing needs to be set on fire is um, spiritually. A shredder would work fine too. Put that thing through a, a wood chipper. 
and then shredder. Yeah. But whatever, you, you know, and then bury it in the ground. Or just set it, set it on fire. Sprinkle the ashes. Something like that. So. <sighs> Harlan Crow, what's going to happen to you, you scumbag? Haha, <laughs> isn't it charming? No. No. Go. <laughs> so charming. Go read the um go read the first hand accounts of the um the soldiers who uh liberated the camps and what they found when they got there. The sights, the smells. The whole thing. And you think it's cute to have a signed copy of Mein Kampf. Get stuffed. Yeah, I know I'm wearing bunny ears, but lovers. Oh, yeah. Authoritarians, aren't they great? Um, Lady Eva said people like that don't have friends. They have marks. That's true. But actually, um, I think the first part of your sentence is, is actually true in and of itself. People like us. Look, I, and, and for the record also, I appreciate a good, you know, um, gallows humor uh, joke. I, I was very much a, a, a goth in college. That's the truth. Um, I didn't wear black lipstick, but I, I had the whole, you know, um, and I can understand that, kind of, but that's, that's not, that's not worshiping a person who, I don't know, hired Mengala. All right, I'll stop there. Frida Smith. Oh, but it's all Sarah's fault? What? Sarah has the day off. She asked if I, if I, she asked if I, uh, if I wanted her to, to, if I wanted her to help me today. And I was like, you're Christian. I'm not going to be, you know, rabbit Scrooge here with, you know, telling Bunny Cratchit <laughs> to come to work. <laughs> Gotta be kidding. Ace of Cups, World, Five of Pentacles, Star, Soros, thank you, Soros, okay. Uh, yeah, it's all Soros' fault. Anti-Semitic much? Um, yeah, he, he inspires a lot of emotion in people. And, oh, you mean he's, you know, on some, in, on, on, in, you know, to some extent, yeah, he can just go home and roll around in his vault of coins like Scrooge McDuck. It's just, um, Five of Pentacles is just this. Oh, I can't do everything I want exactly how I want it. And he has been surrounded by big names. Uh, he's been he's been going on these super ultra lavish uh, um, vacations with uh, Clarence Thomas and his ilk for a long time. And here's the Eight of Swords. This is being hemmed in. And I think this is more with what Clarence Thomas is going to be facing eventually. It's going to take far too long. But um, what? Oh, but everybody he surrounds himself with loves him because they're all on his payroll. Or they're getting stupid amounts of money from him. Seek help, Crow. Seek help. Unbelievable. Oh, Christine liked Bunny Scrooge. Good, good, good. Rabbit Scrooge and Bunny Cratchit. Oh, God, I made Serena laugh, too. Good, good. Oh.
Oh, there's a kitty. Oh, there's a big yawn. Hello, big yawn kitty. How are you doing? Hello, sweetheart. Little fuzzy cuteness. Oh, that was another yawn. Oh, you're a tired kitty. Nine of Pentacles. He's sitting pretty. He doesn't care. Uh, Kristen, Tristan Snell tweet, April 6th. Did right wing mega donor Harlan Crow pay off Brett Kavanaugh's $92,000 country club balance, $200,000 in credit card debt, and a 1.2 million mortgage? If not, who did? Oh, let's have a look at that. Thank you, Kristen. How do you run up $200,000 in credit card debt? I know. I, I, I'm, you know. I'm, I'm just, I'm desperately trying to make enough money to even just like be able to, to use um, Obamacare. <sighs> but how do you, I have good credit, but how do you, as a judge, how do you run a 200,000 okay. death? Oh yeah. Stench of death all over him. Wheel of Fortune. Five of Swords, insult to injury. You think? Yeah, things things are going to change for him, but he's he's seriously padded. Judy Barnes is gambling, but, a, but the the credit card people have to allow you to run up two hundred thousand dollars in debt. How do you get those cards? Man, a day. All right, let's look at um, what you guys were saying. Oh, Kristen, I definitely want to look at, at the uh, um, at that. But there was a uh, case. I hope you're wearing big, fluffy slippers to go with those ears. Alas, no, I don't have any. And there was another question up here, but honestly, like I said, I wasn't able to grab questions, so I'm just gonna wing it, hop it, whatever. Cheap, 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 cheap. All right, we go here. Graham's, uh, we got a Lindsey Graham. He says he's open to sending U.S. forces to Taiwan. I, I, I don't get it. Oh, yes. Um, the Trump's a vault. Let me grab a couple of these questions. So there's a, there's a potential Trump has a has a vault. Um, there is a um, there's a fantastic article about Trump's mental state by um, a mental health professional, which I'd like to read a little bit from. Thank you, B. Smith. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. Sending forces to Taiwan. Yeah, but Ukraine can go whistle. All right. And then this one about Donald Trump's deadline for to file federally mandated personal finance disclosures. Yeah. Requirements of presidential candidates that he was supposed to have it in by March 15th. And he still hasn't. Oh, and Waco. Waco got their money up front. I want to say it was something like 90, $92,000, 60 or 90. I, I have this with numbers. They, they, they move around in my head and my memory. Um, letters I'm great with words. I'm great with numbers. Yeah. So it was either a six or a nine, 60,000 or nine, 92,000 or I forget what, I forget what sweetheart. All right. Um, RCN says it's easy to have credit cards with the credit limits of $20,000. Easy? I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I... Okay. Anyway. Um. So let's let's let's. Uh, okay. And then the the did he pay off um, Harlan Crow? Did he pay off Kavanaugh's debts? At twenty minutes. Did H. Crow 
pay off. I like beers. That's ha. All right, let's do this. Polly one says, anyone else there a thousand there? Barely. <laughs> Look, there, there are some people on, on YouTube who are bringing down Big Bank. I know one of them. Oh, there's a kitty. I just want to just want to squeeze him. All right. Harlan Crow, did you pay off? I like beers debts. Let me see. We read on the nicest people. But you are the nicest people, so it helps a lot. Uh, Kristen says something about World War III. Cat Serpent says, oh, would the kitty do a cute stretch? Oh, he's bathing. He's having a bath. Two of Swords. Yeah, Kevin always in just a little bit of trouble. Just, just, just a little. Yeah. <clears throat> Magician. That would be a con man. Four of cups. Six of cups. King of Swords, Nine of Wands. Mm, there's definitely... All right, Kavanaugh's a con man. And um, this is this is a refusal, but it's also, you know, she's already, she's already down to the three drinks and now she's being offered a great big fourth one. And it's like, oh no, I, I couldn't. Um, this is us being, well, six of cups in, in general would be us at the garden center, us being pretty, pretty pleased. But to some extent, because this is cups here, it's almost like there's more here. The, if, as long as these jerks keep Kavanaugh's addictions going, entertainment only YouTube, Um, as long as they keep his gambling addiction and all of these other things going, they have control over him. Direct control. And this is him feeling beaten up, let's say. It's hard to live as an addict. And I do not believe for one second that he's gone cold turkey. I don't, I, I don't believe it. See, oh, Linger, new member. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Menzies says, cups, cans of beer. Oh, yeah. Um, but I don't have Harlan Crow here. It may not have been a direct thing. There may have been a situation where it was a little from here, a little from there, little, little, little donations to the Federalist Society or what have you kind of thing. Wheezy Squeezebox says, here's their boozy puppet. Yes. And Kat says, Chatalupe has come in to say Happy Easter to Hello, kitten. Hello, good kitty. Oh, you good kitty. And the good puppy dogs out there. Good puppy dogs. Queen of Pentacles. It, yeah, there's a whole lack of a better term, cabal. Knight of Cups, Wheel of Fortune, Page of Wands. Eh. I don't think so. I don't think it was Harlan. I don't think it was Harlan Crow. All right. 
Uh, next, I want to I want to tell you guys about this this article, and the link is in the description box because it's definitely worth reading. But I wanted to give you just a few quotes. This is from Salon, and it's um, a, an article that's catching on enough that uh, there are actually major um, news places that are publishing excerpts from it. So let me make sure I've got the right. Yeah, I've got the, I believe I've got the original salon link in the description. And I'm going to bring this up because I've actually talked about this before. At least this, the headline, because I, I have picked this up many, many times off of him and they are heinous. From Salon, he's visualizing burning things and blowing them up. How Trump may be coping with being caught. Absolutely. The the mental images I get, um, where he's comforting himself with fantasies of rage, destruction, it's heinous. I try to get away from that energy as fast, as quickly as I can. Um, so I wanted to go down here. So apparently there's this Dr. Justin Frank, a former clinical professor of psychiatry at George Washington University Medical Center. He's the author of Trump on the Couch, Inside the Mind of the President. And then he was interviewed and... Um, the interviewer said, when I looked at Trump being arraigned in New York, in particular, the one moment when he glared at the news reporters and cameras, I saw his true self. He looked violent, enraged. And hang on. The way that this doctor explained it, he said, at his core, what we see in that moment with Trump in Manhattan was that he knows he's a criminal who has finally been caught and may be held responsible for his wrongdoings. And he looked like he was full of self-pity. He was defeated and alone. He seemed to realize that nobody feels sorry for him. Trump does not merit or inspire sympathy because he treats so many people so badly. Okay, this thing just jumped on me, I'm sorry. Um, and he was saying he, that Trump's a predator. Predators can massively regress in circumstances where they are um, caged either literally or metaphorically. And they lose even a modicum of self-control. They lash out and need to be restrained for their safety. When a predator is cornered, he generally exhibits paranoia and he becomes hyper vigilant for danger. He will become increasingly paranoid and defeated. I don't know exactly what will happen with the likes of Trump because such human predators are usually denied bail or committed to a hospital for supervision and medication. How would you assess Donald Trump's emotional maturity level? First, he never grew up. He's a child emotionally. Trump's emotional maturity level is perhaps that of a teenager, a 13 year old who has hit puberty and wants to fight people and destroy things. Yes, he has no coping skills. He's a bully, he's a coward. Trump is also a pervert, meaning in the original sense of the word that he has turned away from the truth. <laughs> okay, and, the, and the, uh, the new sense of the word too. He hates the truth. And what this is what sort of self-soothing or coping behaviors does he engage in to compensate trump is dominated by the death instinct which includes pleasure and being destructive 
A person who has this temperament is going to manage his anxieties and fears and other stresses by escalating fantasies of destructiveness. In Trump's mind, he is visualizing burning things and blowing them up. He is fantasizing about hurting other people. Those fantasies of harm and destruction bring, bring him great pleasure. Yeah. If Trump was a mafia boss, he would get his concilia conciliaries uh, to act on his behalf. For Trump to be truly calm and at peace, he would need to rule the world, to dominate everyone and everything around him. He lives to make other people scared. So, yeah, the link's in the description box. That is one heck of a, an article. And I highly recommend it. There's more. There's a lot more there. So over on Salon. Or just go to Salon.com. I'm sure they've got it top article or what have you. So um, Darren says a preschool teacher for 37 years. His parents did a horrible job raising him. They needed a timeout share in the Oval Office during his term. That's true. Janelle says, and Lindsay's telling him to break windows and punch cops on his way out. Just horrible. Oh, Lindsay. I haven't seen that. Man. So Alexander Bellino says, it's so sad that it makes absolute sense. I can't imagine living with that much internal terror turned to rage. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm here every day and how for many, for, for a very, very long time, I have picked up that, um, Uh, I picked up, I would get those mental images of the rage and, and it's not just wanting to destroy things. It's at, let's just say attacking women too. Cherry Berry. Yes. Marie uh, G. Sorry. If I, if I said too much by, by saying your first name there, I'm sorry. I, I didn't think that through. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much for the kitty treats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was, uh, I don't think I've ever seen that many kitty treats in one place. Thank you. I was going to thank you at the beginning. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I, oh my gosh. I feel bad now. I should have thought that through. Oh, sorry. Anyway. Okay. Um, hang on. C.C. Ryder says, Mother Jones Part 2. Kavanaugh explained in his written answers to White House. Um, we have not received financial gifts other than that from our family, which are excluded from disclosure. Please. So glad. Don't feel bad. Okay, good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, that's crazy. Janelle says Lindsay is morphing into Trump. So weird. Oh, no, that's that's right up his alley. That's exactly what he's like. You find the alpha male? You become his best, best, bestest friend, ride or die. And then you're safe. You won't be picked on. Lindsay figured this out at an early age, and that's how he got through school. That's how he's gotten through life. But, um, you know, we know Trump's in trying to inspire violence, but, um, I just, I don't think there's going to be much actual violence. Um, Michelle's asking, is Lindsay scared of Trump? Uh, no, not really. Um, at least not right now. So at 35 minutes, um, will Trump 
what is the what is the correct word? Decompensate. Um, basically, just unravel. So is Trump going to just mentally, emotionally, just unravel? Oh, yeah, Lindsay, the tearful. Grow back bone. Ah, card down, card down. Sitting pretty. Eight of Pentacles. Full. He's right now, it's just uh, rushing, 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 rushing. It's like he can he can get away from having to think about his problems. <clears throat> Plus, he he let's just say he might be having lots of lots of sugar on Easter. So, uh, Trumpy, Trumpy won't be going to unravel. You're gonna unravel like a cheap soup. Now, do do I, I'm not asking is he going to unravel so much that you know he won't be held accountable in court? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the lashing out. I'm talking about people around him being scared to be around him. I'm talking about um, Page of Swords. He's he he's the bully. That's this is the bully card. He's running with scissors. He's putting his dirty hands all over the walls. He does what he wants. Hello, Gerardo. Thank you. Four of Wands. Nine of Pentacles. Star. Depends how much it, it, it depends how much um, good attention he can get, especially good attention, but just attention. Ace of Swords. Page of Wands. All right, so. Okay, a page of wands is, is often a card of a messenger. Um, but Trump is normally the king of wands. So if he's unraveling and regressing, uh, it may, he may be devolving back into a childish version. This is his base at Mar-a-Lago where he thinks he's sitting pretty. Uh, that being at Mar-a-Lago, being at Bedminster, being places where he's surrounding himself with sycophants, that that helps him and he is seeking people out he wants to be around people who are going to gaslight him 24 7 and tell him how great he is because ace of swords this is just the beginning of the the <laughs> sorry a little bit of paper from the outside of the almond on my it's like oh my gosh i feel like i, I <laughs> look like i lost a tooth okay sorry um Ace of Swords, uh, the beginning of his legal nightmares, where he's held accountable for things he actually did and devolving. Well, that's, and that's the thing. If, if the, the angrier he gets, the, you know, his, his lawyers tell him to be quiet. He's not going to listen. His, the judge is going to tell him to be quiet. He's not going to listen. Um, I mean, to the point where what the, the feeling I get from the, the various judges that he's de dealing with or going to deal with is that they really have to ask themselves, am I really going to put this jerk in jail? Because if I'm not willing to put him in jail and take the heat for that, there's no way, there's no reason to even begin to put any kind of gag order or tell him to not say things because he's just gonna. So. so are you, is it going to get to the point where everyone around you is scared of you? Dr. Nancy Living Co. Creatively says Mary Trump is warned of this. Nine of Wands, feeling very beaten up. Out on a limb, beaten up. Four of Swords. 
hermits. All right. What he should be doing, this is legal silence. This is hermit. This is don't think about that. Don't take time to do everything you can to at least try to just put that stuff out of your, your head. Play some golf. Be in the sun. Um, <laughs> I'm not a big sun person, but it would do him some good. Eight of Pentacles. Knight of Wands, Ace of Pentacles. He he won't do this. He just he he won't. I mean, this is what he should do. But he won't. He just has to keep he's trying to outrace it. And he feels like he needs more and more and more money. Oh, I thought you were really, really rich. I thought you were a billionaire. No? Um, no, racing, racing. Wow. All right. What a jerk. All right. Um, Amorosa at 4130. Thank you. For, thank you so much for being here with me. Going through the news is so much better with you. <laughs> Okay, something about Rider Waite? I don't know. All right, so Omarosa. Thank you, Kristen, at Uncover the News for bringing this. Omarosa claims there's a vault containing Trump, Trump's unreleased damaging pictures and stories. All right, well, let's have a look at this because they're, they're, my memory is that David Pecker had a vault where he would keep, you know, all kind of despicable um, catch and kill stories and what have you. And uh, Mia Farrow's son, Ronan Farrow? Yeah. Um, Frank Sinatra's son. I, you can't convince me otherwise, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and I love his, his response when he said, look, to everybody saying that I'm Frank Sinatra, I could be Frank Sinatra's son, let's ask ourselves, couldn't you all? <laughs> that was awesome. From it fair. Thank you. Um, he said he's seen the list, and it was basically just a list of women. Um, but then when somehow, for some reason, somebody looked in the vault after this, the, the thing with Pecker had been going on for a while at the National Enquirer, and real? Sorry, I lost internet for a second. I wonder if that's real or if, if it's like an echo of what what Dave David Pecker had. Sorry, I'm having some internet difficulties. Well, Marissa says there's a vault. Is there a vault containing containing unreleased damaging pictures and stories of Trump. Justice. Justice is coming. Oh, as not for whom justice is coming, Trump. It's coming for thee. Yes, Holly in France. Despicable, true stories. <laughs> All right, Seven of Swords, Thief card. Also stabbing in the back in this deck. Queen of Cups, women, Queen of Pentacles, lovers, gross. Oh, get, get. Um, probably because that's a whole lot of energy of him being disgusting. Quit grossing up my cards, you scumbag. Seriously, Trump, I, I read on stuff like this, Trump really he grosses up the cards, and then I've got to sage everything. Ugh. I would hope if, I would hope if, if somebody got something of mine, or was around something of mine, they wouldn't feel like they needed to sage it. 
you know? Kevin, you are kidding me. He really pronounces his name Pekar? No. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, there's, there's, oh, that's so gross. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm walking away. Um, there's a lot more we don't know about. There's a Um, all right. So at 46 minutes in. Dun, dun, dun. Donald Trump's deadline to file federally mandated. Okay, this is not why why are you cutting this off? Hang on, let me put this here, put that there. There we go. Put that a little to the left, close this side. There we go. So 46, 20. Donald Trump's deadline to file federally mandated personal financial disclosures, a requirement of presidential candidates, was March 15th. It's April 9th. He still hasn't filed them. So can he continue to be a... Um, Can he continue to be a presidential candidate? Mm -hmm. Man. Um, Sandra Nevis is surprised the cards don't catch on fire. Oh, no, I wish it's part of me is like, oh, at least that would get rid of some of the stench. No, it's it's just it's grossness. It's clawing just ew. anyway so hey hey sniffy your uh, financial disclosure forms really i love how uh, one of the, this months and months ago but i was reading with a group of other readers and lena was on one of them and johnny had some sunglasses or something or whatever. So I got out because I was trying to cheer people up. So I got out my box of my sunglasses that are Americana silliness. And I had I have one in particular where you put the glasses on and it's it's an Uncle Sam hat. And then I let this part drop because there are there are two uh two little chains that hang down to a plastic um Uncle Sam mustache and a little goatee. <laughs> so I put the thing on. I let that sink in. And then I just let this drop. And I, I went on with the reading. And Lena was like, I can't take you seriously with that, uh, with that on your face. And it was like. Okay, no, I understand that. And we love Lena. It's just, um, I know people are going to have trouble taking me seriously, but I, I don't care. <laughs> I was still even Sagittarius. You're just lucky you don't get unicorns. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry. Okay, 40, 40, 40. All right, I'll do, do 49. Trump filing his financial disclosure for one second. Right, trying to. I'm an adult. All right. Um, so you are almost a month late with your financial disclosure forms, Donnie. You know why he doesn't want to turn them. He doesn't want to turn them over because he wants to lie. Because he's it's not going so well. Ace of Cups. Very emotional. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hi, Priestess. Uh, thing about this High Priestess card is on the, the bottle, it says secret syrup. And in little text right here, it says, 
The mysteries of the universe are sweeter than you know. The, the mysteries of Trump's finances, us looking at them. Is, uh, this is refusal. Uh, I'm not, this is, this is, this is a requirement of the, from the, the liberals, whatever, whatever. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to show them. So he's refused so far. Tower. Oh, tower card. I don't think it's a good one. King of Wands. Hanged man. Okay. All right. <clears throat> entertainment only. Seriously, entertainment only, YouTube. Um, I think he's lying. I think he's been lying. I think he's... Um, because there's the retired judge who Letitia James has looking after the finances, so they don't they don't get away with just shipping everything overseas at, at Griftco. Um, and there are still some banks willing to work with with the Trumps or Trump kids or the Griftlings or whatever. But um, I can't. He's been lying. He really doesn't want to make this disclosure. Mm -mm. He doesn't want to tell. He this is this is secrets. He doesn't want to tell secrets. This is his tower, but it ends with the hangman. So even if you tried to be generous and say, okay, this tower could be Trump Tower right in the middle, which would be the symbol of his business empire, hangman. Hung, strung up by his heels. The more he discloses, discloses the more legal jeopardy he's uh, going to be in. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. Uh, huh. So. There was, where was it? wasn't there. Here it is. So, uh, we know, wait, okay, so Waco got him to pay his, all the money, came out to total bill $60,714.27, and they all get the, got the money up front and signed a contract. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, Lindsey O'Graham, um, Rick Wilson nails Lindsey Graham for his sad-eyed puppy Trump routine. Um, I kind of want to look at this. I didn't. I haven't seen the what Rick Wilson said, but I, I kind of want to look at this because um, I I'm wondering the. It, how much of this is legal panic? I mean, it could it could not be. I mean, it could just be he's a he's a sycophant. He's always you know, you just pick the the biggest alpha male and um, become that person's ride or die. But he they hear more about um, they hear more about what questions are being asked. And uh, so at 54 minutes in, let's have a look at this. Actually, I wonder, it's just, what did, what didn't, what did he say? Um, Okay, I have to share this. Oh, Rick Wilson, this is this is good. All right, share. Rick Wilson nails Lindsey Graham for his sad-eyed puppy routine. Right on Sunday morning, Katie Fang show. Uh, former Republican campaign strategist Rick Wilson mocks Senator Lindsey Graham's multiple appearances on Fox begging viewers to send money to Donald Trump. We just played that bizarre clip of Lindsey Graham asking for money to help Donald Trump. 
it was like one of those commercials for just a few cents a day. You two can sponsor a former president. <laughs> Wilson laughed. He says it's like some sad Sarah McLaughlin music and sad eyed puppies staring at the screen. <laughs> Oh, that was good. That was good. You too can sponsor. Just a few cents a day, you too can sponsor a former president. <laughs> oh. Alexander <laughs> Williams says it totally was. Yeah. So, how is your. Is this a legal panic on your account where you're freaking out because you see what might happen to you? Or are you just that pathetic? You just know in order to be Trump's ride or die that you have to, you have to debase yourself at such a level. Five of Wands. Chaos on the right, trying to stir things up. Well, that's what Trump's trying to do. That's not your job. I mean, you'd think it would be, but it doesn't feel like that's his job. King of Pentacles. Oh, there's there's Lin, there's Lindsay with his feet up. Seven of Wands. This is on the defensive. King of Swords. Aggressive law enforcement. Ace of Cups. Oh, that beginning is coming. And Six of Cups. Uh, yeah, Fonnie Willis. Hello. Hi. You need anything? Just let me know. <laughs> I don't have much, but if you, you need anything, office supplies, you anything, just let, let me know. Um. Yeah, he's, he's about to walk right into all of this. On the defensive, aggressive law enforcement start of this this whole trial. And then the, everybody, us, us drinking that tea. Not spitting it out, definitely drinking that tea. Uh, and the thing is, is, he's a lot more emotional than a lot of these people I read on. I mean, he's kind of a, he's a, he's a drama king in the first place. Oh, D says, I'm thinking it's a grift for Lindsay, too. It doesn't feel that way. I mean, yes, to some extent, they all do that. But Lindsay feels like he's above some of that grifty stuff. Um, he really is looking for that, that alpha male to give him a sense of security. And he is a very emotional creature. Nothing wrong with being emotional. Huh? Hello. Water, sun, water, moon, water, Mars. Hello. You know, but nine of cups. Everything laid out. All oh, it's like catalog. It's like a cat. It's hard to see this, but it's like a, a page from a catalog, a catalog of evidence. I don't remember his astrology right off the top of my head, to be honest. Eight of Swords. But when I'm reading like this, I'm I'm spinning so many plates, some basic stuff. I, I you normally know just goes. Whew. Eight of Swords, legally hemmed in potentially. Temperance. Judgment. Magician. Page of Cups. You, people keep underestimating Jack Smith, Fonnie Willis, Letitia James. You you keep underestimating these people. This is his, oh, I'll never do it again. Oh, don't look at me. He tried to pull a whole bunch of, I'm a senator. You can't talk to me. You can't, I don't have to answer questions. And the court was like, yeah, you do. Um, he's going to face judgment. And he's going to try to tap dance his way out of it. But you underestimate... You underestimate what 
Bonnie Willis and her prosecutors have. Yeah. Deba says he's only two years older than me. How old is he? Oh, oh, shockwave. Hello. Breaking news. House Republicans suggest defunding the FDA. It would have to get through the Senate. It would have to be signed by Biden. I wouldn't stress it right now. I can look, but I wouldn't stress it. 101. In the arms of the MAGA. <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to defund the FDA. <laughs> Please. Knight of Wands, far right, aggressive. We're going to do the thing. Two of Wands. Pathetic. Ten of Pentacles. Temperance. Even um, this is establishment Republicans. And temperance. This is <laughs> the far right is very pathetically trying to to push all of this, but no point. Noise that means nothing at all. Like much of what comes out of the house these days. Um, I had a couple of um, a couple of interesting questions a few days ago that I've had to carry over because I didn't get to them. Um, and I thought this was interesting. Let's just let's just do something not politic not not political. Just we're just gonna step out of politics for a minute. 10230. Katzi Klein had a question. 230, great name, by the way. Break from politics. What are goats? What are ghosts and why are they here? See what I can I have my own my own theories on this my own feelings but let's have a look uh, let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at the cards say what are ghosts why are they here Boo boo is down here. Boo 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 boo. Eight of Swords. Hemmed in. Okay. Ace of Cups. Six of Cups. Oh, gather round. Gather round for a tale of ghosts, of what they are, why they're here. Starting the come closer. Death in the center. Oh, this is fabulous. I know it's Easter, but this is fabulous. King of Cups. Is that what I heard? Did you hear? Did I hear something clanking in the other room? I'm loving this. Dun, 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 queen of swords. She has a message. Um, the, the best way I can describe this uh, for what it is worth. All right, this is, this is, I'm picking up some of it here, but this is, this is my, these are my feelings. I've said a bazillion times that I believe our souls are small pieces of the divine, but that means that we are, we, our souls are these little pieces of energy compared to the divine. We're little, but actually 
from if we could see our souls, they're actually massive and our higher selves are much bigger. Um, but we are energy. And basically, it's even a matter of, uh, you know, that's why you sage. It's it's because you're giving off energy all the time and it's it's got a slightly sticky quality to it. Um, and it's a sick thing. So if you sage, sage a place, it'll like clear some of that out. Uh, people will tend to have like favorite objects, favorite, a favorite place to sit in a classroom, a favorite things that they're, it isn't, it is partially that, you know, in their, in their brain, it's familiar. So you have to, it takes less energy, but part of it is you're giving off energy and you've left energy there. Like, I love this mug. I made this, I designed it, I bought it. Um, and um, even though I wash it, this still, the more I use it, the more it's infused with my energy as it were, all right? In order for us to be on this level, this this little piece of, of really high powerful energy, high vibration energy, we're down on a, in a very low vibration level. And then there, there are levels beneath us where it, they, it's even lower vibration. Um, so basically, we are this energy. We are this energy, and we will, we will, we will stick. Our energy sticks to things. And if there's a trauma, what happens when you when there's a trauma? Blast of energy. Right. So if you're talking about traditional kind of the creepy, creepy ghosts, it's kind of one of two things. Well, it can be one of three things. Anyway, um, it's an echo because there's this energy, this blast of, of it, it, it like, um, like hitting a negative. Uh, uh, for those of you who are old enough to remember what a negative, a film negative is, uh, it's, it's, imprinted and it's just repeating um just because that's we're giving off this energy and, and when there's trauma we give off a blast of energy now ghosts can also be spirits actually coming down to visit and they do it's I, I i find it interesting because i kind of picture it as like they almost have to like hold their breath and like come down here and interact but then they can't stay that long it's like uh, running out of air I've got to go back. Um, you get that kind of those kind of spirits, but those aren't really ghosts. Um, or you get the super creepy crawlies, um, which it's just um, on this level, this low vibration level we're on, and the ones beneath it, beyond what you can visibly see, there's there's an energetic plane, and this energy we're giving off that will stick to things, it will also stick to itself. And you get what I call um, energetic dust bunnies. And these clumps of energy that we're giving off, they're not high enough energy to, to, to kind of ascend or move up levels. So they're just here or even slower. And so they start cobbling themselves together, which is where you get those weird, the stories about like, weird mishmash demony things that but they're not they used to call them demons but really it was like head of this but with the claw and uh, lion's teeth and weirdness that's just a mishmash and those and some of the like really heinous people like Epstein who when they they're of such low vibration themselves because they've done so many heinous things when they pop out of their body their souls immediately sink down into the levels. It's not fire, it's just compacted. That's what I get. And then they're like frozen in that, but they 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 become parasites to try to survive. They don't have a they they are they can't get the energy down from their higher selves. I mean think the like Epstein and Trump when he goes and all of this, they get they're on like a little trickle charge, but they they have to become like parasites because they need to take in energy and they can't really access that. So they try to scare you because that's low vibration energy and they want to feed on it. 
so they can continue to exist. So you get all the creepy and the woo. It's just like, you're an energetic dust bunny, go away. Sage, salt, I'm gonna go read a book, get lost. You know, maybe get some help into, you know, close down if there's if there's enough of like something happened there that kind of ripped the spiritual veil a little bit. But on the whole, don't let them take your power. That's stupid. They're just, they're. I wouldn't even Kathy Delasa's energy vampires. I wouldn't even give them that much credit because they want you vampires, vampires. They're going to make you scared. You know, she said with her. Her rabbit is on. Um, no, they're just dust bunnies. <laughs> and not like the cute ones under uh, the big comfy couch. I loved, that was my favorite part of that show. The dust bunnies. Playing red light, green light under the big comfy couch. Anyway. Sandra Nevin says the Winchester mansion was creepy. Um, yeah, but she, she went full. She made it creepier. So, um, anyway, so yeah, that's Sharon Rice says Cash Peters did a reading recently on someone described the sinking exactly and how you saw it. Oh, cool. We love Cash around here, he's awesome. All right, it is 1 30 p.m. on Easter Sunday. And that's going to do it for me for today. So uh, the I'll still be there the, for the Creative Sprints. And um, so over on the Creative Sprints channel on YouTube from 3 to 6 p.m. Chicago time, I will be there with anyone who's willing to come along. We'll do some creative work. I'm, 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 I'm working on a little graphics project. I don't want to talk about it yet because I'm, I'm not sure if I can fully pull it off, but it would be very interesting if I can pull it off. So I'm going to be working on that. Um, but and you don't have to stay the whole time, of course. But anyway, other than that, I will be right back here tomorrow and tonight at 7 p.m. Chicago time, central time in the U.S., uh, the Petty Boots Club will be meeting. Uh, so do do check that out. Becca from House of Lenormand, Jen Lynn from Jen Lynn Tarot, and Johnny from uh, Tarot's Apprentice. I don't know who, who they're going to have on, uh, if anybody. And sometime this coming week, fingers crossed, um, I might be on Astrology Alert. So, talking about Trump. So, hopefully, hopefully we can pull that off. It's been really crazy. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you. Love and light to you all. There, I couldn't say it better myself. All right. Take care. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Hang in there. You are not alone. We are in this together and there are good days ahead. All right. So hang in there. Bye.